Yevgeny Onyegin has many stories. It's not just a story about a young girl who writes a letter. It's many stories. It's a story about a young girl growing up. It's a story about a cynical man learning that he has to somehow come to terms with his emotional landscape inside of him. It's a story about people going from the country to the city. It's a story about snobbery. It's a story about communities. It's a story about time. I mean, we're dealing, as all great operas are, with multiple stories. And so you're dealing with many different layers of many different stories, which of course Tchaikovsky brilliantly combines into one large musical theatrical landscape. In this opera, uh, you are dealing with four people in love, Olga, Lenski, Tatiana and Onyegin. But really Tchaikovsky makes the central story of his opera, this relationship between Tatiana and Onyegin. Mirrors it so beautifully that uh, at the beginning Onyegin uh, uses irony and cynicism to talk to this woman who is just nothing but pure emotion. At the end of the opera, she has learnt irony and cynicism, and he is just pure emotion. And I think why the opera is so extraordinarily successful after its premiere and is performed and loved all around the world is that because people know and people understand that Tatiana and Onyegin and Olga and Lenski's problems are our problems because Tchaikovsky and Pushkin understood that the human character and the hum human condition doesn't really change. We are very lucky because Gunter Papandale looks very young. He looks uh, like uh, Pushkin intended, a very young man. This means that there's a very different form of cynicism and arrogance than if you have a middle-aged baritone playing on Jägen, which makes perfect sense. But it, it, it pushes into a completely different story. And I think that's very, very important for our production, that they make mistakes. They say things they don't really mean. They, 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 they make these outbursts that they then regret. And in the case of this opera, what's I think very important is that you must feel for Onyegin, even though he has behaved you know, fairly badly in the opera. And even though he does have uh, an unsympathetic character trait, it's very important that you understand that we don't think you are a pathetic, um, uh, cruel, ugly man at the end. We actually feel sorry for the fact that he is so emotionally imprisoned. I believe very much this opera has to come from the body and the voice of the singers. It's not about big scenery. It's not about glamorous costumes. It's not about huge dance numbers. You can't go wrong on an opera stage with the right music, with young people love, particularly young people in love dying. It's, it's, a, it's a winner. Um, but in the case of Onyegin, what I think is important is that um, it's an opera not about success. It's not, and it's not about the two lead characters dying. They don't have the release of death. It's an opera that ends on a question mark. I mean, there are very few masterpieces, particularly of 19th century opera, that end with such a question mark as Onyegin. What happens now? We know they're never going to be together. She's going to go off and have children with Prince Kremen, and who knows, he's going to go off to Africa and, and it would die in the Amazon. We don't know what's going to happen, but, but, but this is a question mark hanging over. It's so wonderful to do, particularly a 19th century opera, which leaves a massive question mark hanging over the future of the characters. We now know, after Tchaikovsky's death, that Tchaikovsky struggled with his homosexuality all his life, that he used the characters, particularly the female characters, in a lot of his pieces ballets and operas to explore his sexuality through his music and through metaphors in a way like Tennessee Williams did in America in the 40s and 50s with his plays. They wrote extraordinary three-dimensional characters that are not drag characters. They're not the composer in drag. This is, is a story about human beings that is written by a gay man that understood very, very, very clearly and unfortunately understood what Tatiana Odinyegin had to do or must go through and I think that makes it even more poignant. I can't do opera productions unless I have singers that not, not just not could just act but inhabit and this yeah, inhabiting means with the, through their bodies. Uh, uh, opera is not just voice, uh, it is voice and body, it's voice and body in space. This means that what the characters do with their bodies, how they move, how they react with the music makes opera such an interesting art form for me. Anyone can do an interesting set design. Anyone can do interesting costumes. Anyone really with a bit of talent can come up with a concept. The work and the interesting thing is how you can ignite these passions in the singer's body that the voice and the body are a gesamtkunstwerk. 
So in a piece like Onyegin, you have to have performers that can be very believable on stage. The piece for me doesn't work if you would make it abstract. The piece doesn't work if the characters are treated as, as puppets or non-characters. The piece works n only through psychological realism, I believe. This piece, and with Asma Gregorian as Tatiana and Günther Papandel as Onyegin, I have two performers who really inhabit through a great deal of ambiguity these characters and make it much richer and more ambivalent than I've seen for a long time.